Nezai here. I've decided to use a dishwasher tablet box to make a, a binder ring cover for my mixed media morsels. And here I'm just sorting out which of my variously sized binder clips that I'm going to use. And I decide to use the one with the biggest um, O-ring because I'm going to be able to fit a lot more into that. And you just have to make sure that they fit within the, the back of the uh, what's going to be the back of the folder, the back page of the folder, or the back cover of the folder, um, in order for it to be able to open and close correctly with your pages inserted. So I'm just going through a rather speeded up version here of applying some PVA glue to the uh, back of the, or the shiny side of the box and I'm just using an A3 sheet or two A3 sheets of um, printer paper here. It's uh, just to give it a, you could just coat it with gesso or paint it. Um, I decided to use the paper. I often think these little recycled boxes, um, it doesn't hurt for them to have a little bit of extra um, extra support, extra, um, extra strength that the paper and the glue provides. I go to simply fold these corners up here and decide I really should cut them off. I should have done the corners properly. I do them correctly on the second page. I put two layers on this. Um, and using the PVA glue does give it a, a wetness that wrinkles up the paper a little bit. Uh, I wasn't really sure how I wanted to complete the folder cover at this stage. I'm still thinking it through and even though I've got it almost completed I'm still thinking it through. Here we go with the second sheet. I think I held up the bottle of glue, the uh, Helmar 450 glue and that if you don't want any wrinkles and um, corrugations and texture in your page that you're covering the paper or whatever you're using to cover your journal is a good one to use because it adheres down much more smoothly uh, there's not as much moisture in it and so the paper stays a lot smoother but I rather like the texture that the PVA gives plus I can splash it around with a bit more blithely than I can the Helmar it's m far more easily available and much cheaper here in Tasmania so it's sort of my go-to for the certainly for the bottom layers of the cover after I got all the white on I left it to dry overnight, it was two layers. I didn't bother covering the inside because I'm going to line the inside covers and the spine later. Uh, so I just left it to dry. It was dry by the time I went to go to bed so I popped it under the Webster so it spent the night under the Webster for, and came out the next morning looking beautifully flattened. It was, uh, had a good effect the Webster. Smoothing it down with the brayer, making it nice and um, getting the adherence well connected. You can see there, it almost looks like a wood grain effect with the, um, the effect of the PVA glue on the paper. Here it is next day, lovely and flat, perfectly dry, all in order. And I've gone through and found a page from an old um, history of costume textbook and I'm using up some of those. It's lovely quality paper, nice designs. I've been using them up in all sorts of ways in my journals lately and so I decided to use that as the main cover. I'm using the uh, Helmar 450 glue and I really don't know why because I then go and cover it with a very wet coat of paint so it was all a bit pointless but that's me. I do these funny things. Here I'm just applying some double-sided tape rather than wet adhesive here, putting it along both the, as I usually do, the uh, right along the edge of the cover and also the edge of each of the pieces of covering paper. Uh, gives it a very good secure adherence. that all the way around, all four sides. Almost had that end one too, too narrow but it's going to be nicely covered up so you won't even see that. It's 
just enough to adhere down there. I'm removing the release paper from the tape after I give it a good burnish. I've been really enjoying doing the mixed media morsels and putting the description of the technique on the back of each of the cards. It's going to make a really good record when I go to do these um, user techniques on a project. It'll be a great reference tool. And I've been doing that in my other little book and decided, no, I really want to do something a little bit more permanent. I started by making each of my techniques quite large because I can use them and then, gosh, once you've used them, <laughs> you've got no reference points. So I'm going back and starting at the beginning and doing what I should have done from the very beginning. Getting that last little bit off, that little turn up edge, burnishing them down. off a couple of tiny little divots just on the corners and there's the cover cupboard. Very gently bending it up, getting that uh, those crease lines in around the spine. This little journal is about 15 and a half centimetres tall or just over six inches, six and a quarter inches by 13 and a half centimetres or about five and a quarter inches um, each cover. And the spine is, let me see, it's about five centimetres or two inches. It should just be a nice size for putting all of those lovely techniques in. Here I'm just measuring up to make some lining for the inside. I've decided to put just another little piece with rulers from the same History of Costume book. It was just a page that was a little scrap left. And the coloured pages um, I copied from the, uh, the collage pieces from the just old um, advertisements from the graphics fairy. I was going to do my own collage and then I saw those ones and thought they were just perfect as advertisements for old lace and bits so it kind of followed the theme. Here I'm just mixing up um, some blues, a nice watery mix just to wash over the uh, outside of the journal and around the edges of the inside. I, I really don't know what I'm going to do with the cover. I did think at first I would do the torn strips um, a la Cat Hand, the one of her techniques, but I've already done a journal in that and thought I'll just put a wash of colour over the outside of the book. I don't want to hide all of the text at this stage. I'll just put a wash make it nice and wet, make it nice and wrinkly. Um, I don't know why I was so careful to use the Hellmouse, but there you go. It's actually dried very flat now. Um, it still looks quite wrinkly there. Got the blue all over it, and now I'm putting a, a very light wash of silver over the top of that. It just gives it that nice gleam, a bit of gilding. I'm a bit addicted to having that hint of metallic colour or sheen over the top. Once I've finished the cover I'll show you that once I start getting or once I put my technique cards in and I'll I'll do a quick show and tell just to uh, once I finally decide what I'm going to do with the cover. There it is, there it is nice and dry and you can see how, how smooth it is. It's got some texture from the from the silver runnels, but in reality the it's really quite flat. I'm just checking to make sure that I've got those small enough. I nearly overdid it. You really have to be careful not to have it going over the um, 
onto the spine you sort of need it to really avoid that the bend otherwise it just bends the edges up and I really could have done with taking a sixteenth of an inch off both of those the front and back covers but it's okay I just I think it'll just survive this is the little spine piece with the the measurements on it the measuring tapes and normally I would find the middles and line things up but because this is mostly going to be covered and it was fairly easy to get straight with all those lines I just eyeballed it working it into those grooves <coughs> I was really pleased with how it turned out it feels very robust it's very sturdy it's um, the tactile quality of a, a of a journal is really important and this one already feels very good now it's uh, almost finished I think the weight of the initial cardboard box was it's very sturdy and I think that helps it's very sturdy without being thick There's lots of wonderful printables on the Graphics Fairy. They're just, I've been trying to come to grips with Photoshop and do my own collaging, but I couldn't resist these. They were already done. Very quick and easy to print them off. I carefully reposition that slightly crooked. The helmet does dry very quickly but if you whip it up fairly instantly you, you get a second chance. Reinforcing those folds once again using the bone folder. Now we go to put the little ring binder in and I'm using little brass uh, posts. Unfortunately I was nearly out. I'm just marking the holes now with a, a black pen so I get those in the right position. Make sure they're centered from the top and from the bottom so that they're it's in the center of the, of the little cover. And I'm just rechecking that to make sure. And there you can see the little metallic posts, little brass posts. I've got one in the bottom. Um, the trouble was these are a little uh, long. The posts are a tiny little bit long and rather than wait and get to town and buy some shorter ones, I just had a little scrap of grunge paper on the waiting to be tossed and I managed to get four little strips from it. Um, to pack underneath the bar of the ring binder. I've used in the past um, the Selly's um, foam tape which is also very good but those little bits of grunge paper just were sitting there waiting to be asked to use so they saved the day. Just about to punch the the hole in the top to get it on the light so you can actually see exactly where you're punching and putting the top post in they fit very snugly they're very tight through that the large uh, punch on the crocodile just fitting the ring binder component on and doing up the little brass screws. Using a much smaller screwdriver than I really should have. But it was enough just to turn them to make them tight. And that's it. That's the little folder all done, ready and waiting for the rest of the mixed media morsels to go in. And I'll show you the cover when I've got it finished, as I said. 
Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.